Hey everyone, welcome to Star Morph, where we talk about artificial intelligence and web development. Today we are going to go into building your own knowledge base to bring your own data into LangChain and use it with GPT-4. So how do you bring in some of your specific data to interact with GPT-4? Uh, as a lot of you probably saw in my last video, we showed what this can do, you know, giving more specific answers to your content. And in this presentation, I'm going to go over some of the different pieces that are at play when you're building a knowledge base like this. Uh, so this is an outline of the presentation. We're going to go over embeddings, vector storage, link chain documents. So uh, just an overview of the whole building a knowledge base. So let's get started. All right. So first off, what data do you want to bring into this app? What data can you bring into this app? These are some of the file loaders that are supported by LangChain. And there's also web loaders. So there's an ability to bring in Amazon S3 files. You can bring in a GitHub rep repository. Uh, you can do web scraping with things like Puppeteer or Cheerio. And then you can also do these file loaders. And so just a little bit about these. I typically do a PDF uh, file loader or I do text files or markdown documents. And I've had those working really well. I've had some issues with docx files and I believe the CSV file loader takes some configuration. You have to identify what headers and rows and columns you want to use. So um, the LLM does well with, with raw text, um, especially structured text if possible. So that's what I've been doing so far. But the way that I do it also is I make a directory. There's also a directory loader and then I can um, I can load in any PDF or text files in that directory that I put in into the embedding and into the next steps we're about to go to. So once you identify what your file type is and what your data is going to look like, then we can load our data into LangChain, into our LangChain application using um, a document loader and creating a LangChain document. So you can see here we're importing, and this is the JavaScript, this whole Presentation will be on JavaScript LangChain. Uh, we're importing the text loader from LangChain. And then we are loading this text file here using the text loader. So this is important because this concept of loading in a document is how we start to get access to work with our, our data in the LangChain application. And um, another thing to consider here is we have some tools to help us parse the the text so we can do things like splitting and chunking the text um, when we're loading it into the documents and loading it into the embeddings. And that's another tool that LangChain provides. Okay, so once we have the document, a next piece of the puzzle is creating an embedding. So let's start out with what is an embedding. An embedding is used, as it says here, to create a numerical representation of textual data. So it's a vector of numbers lots of vectors of numbers, and each number, the closer a number is to another one, the, the more similar they are. The distance between the numbers signifies how similar different uh, parts of the embedding are. So let's just zoom out here a little bit, and this is actually a visualization of what we're gonna be doing with these embeddings. So we're gonna create the embedding, these vectors, with uh, numbers representing our document, and then what we're going to do is we're going to perform a similarity search over the embedding. And we're also going to talk more about vector storage and creating a database for these embeddings um, that we'll also use in this process of doing similarity search. So this is a cool visualization of what we're actually trying to do here. We're loading in our source document, whether it's a text file or a PDF file. Then we're creating this vector structure um, to organize the information with numbers. And then we're able to perform this kind of similarity search now that it's in this embedding format. And, and this is also a format that we're able to send over to OpenAI um, and interact with GPT-4 with the embedding. Okay, so that's a little bit about what embeddings are. It's just a list of numbers that tells you about your source document uh, context. And there's a great website. Um, there's a lot of great websites that talk about this. One of the pages I usually go to is just the OpenAI pages page about embeddings. And so this is a great resource to learn more about 
what they are, measuring the related of text strings, and then we can do search as well as some other features here. Okay, so let's talk about creating and embedding in Langchain, how do you use them? So we can import the OpenAI embedding section of the library, and this also is available in the OpenAI API directly, uh, which this page will go into. And there's two kinds of embeddings that we can do with Langchain. Um, the first is embedding the query. So you can think when you're using a chatbot, the actual prompt that the user is typing into the bot, we can embed that search. And then we can also embed on the other side, the actual document, like we were just talking about, bringing in the document loader and embedding the document. And then you can, I believe, use the query embedding in reference to the document embedding. And um, yeah, so there's two forms of embeddings that we can do here, both the query and the document. And that's from the Langchain documentation. Okay, so now we have an embedding of our document. We are able to create an embedding of our query. Let's talk about managing these embeddings. And that's where we get into vector storage. And this is a very exciting area right now. Um, these companies are, there's some amazing technology coming out. Chroma just raised around, Weaviate just raised their Series B, Langchain just raised around, Superbase just built a vector database plugin, which I'll talk more about. So lots of really exciting stuff happening here. Congratulations to these companies. And I'm really excited for all of the tools that I imagine uh, are going to come out of this. And I think that it's a great time to jump into this stuff and start learning while these tools are early on and before they get more advanced might as well learn the fundamentals now so we can understand uh, how to continue using them as they develop. So, all right, this is a lot here. Vector storage, it sounds kind of crazy. If you want to just get started into it, where's a good place to start? So my thoughts on this are there are two main things to consider. The first is what environment are you going to be coding in? Because some of these uh, are going to work better with Docker. Some will work in a Node.js app. Some can work in the browser uh, serverless. So consider what environment you're going to be coding in. And then the second thing is what scale are you building a vector storage app? So if you want a production level SaaS where you want a hosted service at scale, then you know something like Pinecone could be a great option. If you want to have a, a small file in your GitHub repo, uh, I think a great way to get started is using this HNSW lib tool that comes with Langchain. And it will create your embeddings and then store them into a file that will be local in your GitHub repo. You don't need to sign up for a cloud service and you know manage having a remote and a local vector storage. It's just a super simple file. Um, so I think this is a great way to get started. There's a page on the Langchain documentation about the differences between each of these. So if we go to vector stores, here Langchain recommends what to pick. And similar to what I was just saying, they talk about the different environments. So for a node application, they recommend HNSW. Browser-like, uh, so maybe serverless on Vercel, you can use the Langchain memory vector store which I, I want to play with. I haven't used that one yet. Um, there's also a lot of Python options uh, in the Python documentation. If you are running it locally with Docker, your backend developer, um, or then you can use Chroma. And then Supabase just launched a, they just launched a package manager for database packages. Uh, so like NPM, but for database packages. And there is one now that is a vector store, um, I believe, integrated with Langchain. So I'm definitely looking forward to trying that out. Superbase just had an awesome launch week coming out with a ton of new cool stuff. And I really love using Superbase. Um, so that's a brief overview of, you know, some of the differences between these. Um, it's great trying out different ones and seeing the different functionalities. For getting started again, I would recommend starting with this has been a good experience for me and then Pinecone at a larger scale. Uh, but I definitely want to play with all these tools more. So I hope that's helpful on a little overview of some of the options here. And moving into how do we kind of start to use all this together? And uh, so this code snippet here, I apologize, it's a little blurry, is coming from the Langchain documentation. 
And so we're doing a few of the steps here. First, we load in our text document. We create a lang chain document from it. Then from this document, or then we are loading it into the vector store, both the document and creating a new embedding with OpenAI and loading that into the vector store as well. And then we can do a vector store dot similarity search. So this is where all the pieces are starting to come together. We're loading our data in, creating the document, creating the embedding, storing that in the vector storage. And so that brings us to the second to last slide, which is kind of looking at this from a macro view. So there's act, there are definitely other pieces of this as well where you know the LLM comes in, um, but just about what we've talked about so far, this is a basic overview. You can bring your data in, whether it's from a file or from the web. You can create a, a lane chain document with their loader. Then you can use OpenAI's API to create an embedding. And then when the user searches, they'll create an embedding of the search. And then we can store these embeddings as well as the document in the vector database. So that's kind of uh, architecture. This is my current best understanding of what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, this is all changing very quickly. So definitely check the lane chain documentation is going to be more up to date. And I will continue to, uh, you know, learn and get better at this and share better information as I learn what's happening here. But this is my current best understanding of how some of these uh, knowledge bases are working. So I hope this is a helpful overview. And in terms of learning, learning more about this stuff, these are some of the YouTube channels and uh, communities that I've been learning from. And I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of these channels already. They're giving great content on lang chain, on building knowledge bases, working with large language models. Um, of just leading, reading the docs is honestly just sitting down and reading the docs is super valuable. And these guys, you know, are updating it every single day and every single week on Twitter. It's just new stuff. So very exciting space. And I know a lot of businesses are interested in doing this because it's pretty amazing to be able to bring in, you know, these tools to your custom data. There's a lot of different applications for it, whether it's a question and answer bot or producing assets for your business um, or reading large documents that you don't have time to read a 400 page document, but you want to ask it a few questions. So I hope this is a helpful overview of some of how this stuff is working with Langchain. And I know I imagine you guys want to see some coding on this too. Uh, we have some snippets here from the docs, but I would love to make a future video. I'm still working on this where we're gonna kind of build out this um, build out this code and add the pieces together in an app um, because I know you guys want to do that as well. So this is stepping towards that and I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.